Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today I have a card featuring the new Loads of Fun stamp set. This is an adorable stamp set with a washing machine, cute little clothes and images, and then great greetings that coordinate with the theme of the images in this stamp set. I'm going to create a kind of um, pink and red, so love themed, but birthday card. I purposely kind of kept the colors to pink and red. I thought it would be fun for this image. And with those colors and then the greeting, this would be a great birthday card to send out to someone who celebrates a birthday in February. There are also lots of other greetings. So if you don't need a birthday card, you can always um, use the different greetings and just swap those out with the same design of this card. So definitely lots of different ways to use the images in this stamp set. I am stamping the washing machine, then the t-shirt, the little underwear, a sock, and then the laundry basket and the box of dryer sheets and laundry soap using Memento Tuxedo Black ink on smooth white cardstock. Then I'll be coloring in all of the images with Copic markers. I am going to definitely speed this up a little bit to um, get through this quicker because there is a lot of coloring and it took a little bit to get all of these colored. Just put on a great TV show or music and color away until you have them all ready to go. For the washing machine, I originally kind of wanted to keep it a white color. And I do think in the finished card, it definitely exudes that feel of, of being a white washing machine. Even though as I'm coloring with these cool gray markers, it definitely looks gray. It gives that um, dimension, I guess I want to say, and doesn't make it look so flat. I am using C4 and then lighter, usually C00 and C1 or C2 here. Or I guess not C1, just C2. And really blending that out. So I started with C4, then went with C2, and then kind of went over the entire thing with C00 to really blend it. As that ink evaporates and dries, I think it looks a little bit more um, light. For the actual glass part, I'm using BG10 and BG13. And then really blending all that out with a colorless blender in the center. Most of that's going to be colored up, but I didn't want to color the entire thing with the BG10 and make it too aqua. Again, as that ink dries, it'll definitely smooth out a little bit and not look quite so glaringly. Um, it, I think it always looks a little bit wet until that dries. I'm going to go ahead and skip down and work on the shirt now. It's going to be pink with a red collar. The pinks are R81, 83, 85, and then the reds are going to be R24, 29, and 39. Any color that I'm using is shown across the bottom of the screen in case you're ever wanting to know exactly what color I used or for reference. I'll skip over to the little pair of underwear. This really reminds me of like the little underoos that were popular when I was little. Um, and even my kids had some when they were really little. The little matching set I think are kind of cute. And no depending on what color you use, this could go for girl or boy or whatever. This definitely would be more of a um, feminine themed card just with the pinks and reds, I think. But if you switch that up to maybe some blues or blues and greens or whatever, it could definitely work for a man as well. I'm gonna fill in the laundry basket now, which I really love the laundry basket. I think it kind of makes the whole scene. I'm going to make sure everything in the laundry basket is red and pink as well. And I decided to pull in one additional kind of shade, which I'll add in a little bit. And unfortunately, I'm a little out of the frame here, but I am coloring in the knobs on the top of the washing machine with C8 and C9. That's just going to make them really dark. And then I'm going to go ahead and go over them with glossy accents after I die cut everything. Here's that lighter shade that I was talking about. And I think by pulling in a third kind of color family here, it really kind of evens or completes the whole look. 
instead of having everything just be those two original shades of pink or red. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and color in the sock with those two lighter pink colors, which, which are R00 and R20, with a little red band around the top. For the laundry basket, again, I want it to look sort of more white, but if you leave it stark white, it really, it doesn't look natural with all the shading within the other images, I guess is what I want to say. So again, I'm using some cool gray markers to add a little bit of color. If I get too much, I just went over it with the colorless blender to kind of even out any of those places that maybe got a little too dark. It'll push that ink a little bit. And then in between those little slats in the basket, obviously the basket is full. So if you leave those white, it looks a little unnatural. So I went ahead and went in with my pinks and reds and filled in those little areas so that it looks like the laundry basket is actually full with all those little um, either clothing items or towels or whatever they might be in those same shades. Along the bottom of the laundry, um, or washing machine, I am going to go ahead and go darker there with C4 and C8. And then I'll color in the dryer sheets with the aquas and some gray just to kind of mix it up a little bit. It pulls in that aqua that's on the washing machine front. And I love the way aqua looks with pink and red anyway. And then for the laundry soap image, I will color that with the pinks and reds again. So just kind of quickly color this in. Once this is colored, all of my images are ready to be die cut. I'm gonna use some Snips scissors to trim them apart, lay the coordinating loads of fun dies over the images, and then run them through my Big Shot. I try to die cut as many with one pass of the, mach one pass of the machine as possible. I wasn't able to die cut the laundry basket the image there simply because the dies were too close together. It wasn't too close for a separate cut, but it was too close to um, nicely be able to lay the die out and do that. So I ended up having to run it through twice, which is fine, but I always just try to eliminate that extra work if possible. These snip scissors make it so much easier to cut these apart rather than trying to bend them or cut them with another um, pair of scissors. These are specifically for cutting wire. Here I'm running the images through my die cutting machine. And then I'll pop all of those out and set those aside. I will immediately take my dies and place them on the magnetic backing that I always put in the back of my uh, coordinating stamp package. That way I don't lose any of the dies. I'll run the laundry basket through. Now I have trimmed down a piece of watercolor cardstock to three inches tall by five and a half inches wide. That's going to be the span the width of a card and then I used one of these stitched borders dies from Lawn Fawn. It's a little uh, dotted border to adorn both of the edges of this strip. This is where all the scene is going to actually be placed and then I will place it on another panel before placing it on my card. I am using the Spun Sugar Distress Ink to add color to about the bottom two-thirds of this panel. Then I'm taking this stencil from Simon Says Stamp. It has these great little mini hearts here. These are the mini spaced hearts. And again, taking the exact same color of Distress Ink, the Spun Sugar, and just sponging over them. I'm not getting all of them. I wanted it to be kind of random, but it adds just a very slight illusion of those hearts in the background. So the color is mainly focused along the bottom and then it gets lighter and then it has those sponged hearts. I'm taking the greeting now from the Loads of Fun stamp set and stamping Loads of Fun with the Lawn Fawn Lobster Red ink which it looks like it's getting a little dry there. I need a re-inker, which is great because Lawn Fawn is releasing re-inkers for all of their inks, which is so exciting. Then from the Plastic Flamingo ink, I'm gonna stamp the rest of the greeting right above, and then go ahead and start adhering all of my pieces to this panel to build the scene. The scene doesn't always have to be the entire front of the card. It can be concentrated in one small area, whether it be 
um, a panel or a strip like I'm showing here. There's just lots of different ways. So this is mainly concentrated in this strip and then the strip will be placed on the card which will have a little bit of additional inking and distressing to add interest to that background. I'm using a combination of medium glue dots and uh, the bling glue dots. The medium ones are much bigger, so for some of those larger die cut pieces, those work great. I don't have to add near as many uh, adhesive dots to the back, but for the little ones, I like the bling. And then I decided I needed some laundry bubbles, so I stamped both of the images from the Loads of Fun stamp set, colored them in with my Copic markers, and then I will die cut those with the coordinating dies and attach those to my panel as well. And I think that really kind of completes the whole look, plus ties in that nice aqua color to kind of balance out this entire scene. Once I attach these with those bling glue dots. This is a great example of a small die cut image where these bling glue dots work perfect for. I'm going to take some glossy accents and go over those bubbles to really make them shine and have that great dimension. Then I'll go ahead and set aside this whole panel while I work on the rest of the card. Just make sure I got everything placed, pushed down or attached really well. Then I have this great nozzle tip on the end of my glossy accents which helps with making sure that it's precise where I apply the glossy accents. And that's going to make a huge difference. I did go ahead and apply that to the buttons on the top of the washing machine as well. And that makes a huge difference on the washing machine. Instead of having that really flat black look up there at the top, it's a great glossy looks and it glossy look and it really kind of draws your eye, you know, to that whole image. I'm going to set that aside and oh, I forgot. I did add some detail to the t-shirt with a white gel pen. I'm just going to do kind of a crosshatch design very quick and easy but it adds just a little bit of interest and makes the little t-shirt or undershirt there not so plain. Here is that uh, second panel. This is going to be the background of the card. It's five and a half inches by four and a quarter inches. Again I am apply applying the spun sugar distress ink but I did add just a tiny touch of picked, raspber picked raspberry across the bottom to darken it and I'm going to pull that up, but not quite all the way to the top. It's very, very light, but it's going to add a lot of interest to that background instead of being plain white. I did spritz it with water from the Distress Sprayer, which is my favorite distressing tool. It's going to leave some nice splotches. Um, I'll dab that up with a dry paper towel, let it dry, add some foam adhesive to the back of my strip, and attach it to the panel before attaching the entire thing to the front of a side fold card base. I'm going to use a nice strong adhesive to attach the whole thing. And that is going to finish this great birthday themed card featuring the Lawn Fawn Loads of Fun stamp set and coordinating dies. Thanks for watching this video showcasing new stamps and dies from the CHA 2016 Lawn Fawn release. Here are a couple more videos you might be might be interested in. Please subscribe for weekly card making and stamping videos. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.